morning. Welcome to the first feel good flow of February on the 1st of February. I just realigned my phone. Hello. I just realized my phone because Mimi over here is looking so cute. Thought that would be a nice little little thing to see in the background. And then we've got Bonnie somewhere over there. Somewhere over there, she's just a black blob. How's it going? Joining me live. This is, um, yeah, the first feel good flow of the month. And we were moving through a new theme or a new posture theme. And I put out the poll, I don't know, a couple, maybe a week ago, <laughs> I don't know. Time is weird these days, but maybe it was just over or just under a week ago. And I asked whether you would like to do pigeon or crow, exploring different variations of those postures. And crow won by, morning Haley, crow won by one vote. So I realize there's still a lot of pigeon lovers out there. And, you know, the cool thing is that crow also involves a lot of hips. So for those pigeon people out there, I will, I will definitely keep some pigeons and keep some good hip openers because it is also very useful for crow. All right, we got some people joining. This is wonderful. I'm going to do my best to keep it to 30 minutes. <laughs> we'll see how that goes this morning. If you do need to leave early, then no offense ever taken. Always just do what you can. Stay for as long as you can, whatever whether that is five minutes or 15 minutes or 30 or 40 minutes. Awesome. Have we practiced together before? Mary, Mary, is that your name? I'm excited. Okay, so it's nine o'clock. So if you would like to put on the playlist, I shared a playlist this morning. If you have other music you would like, you can definitely do that or no music at all. Oh, there's Mimi. Hopefully she gets cozy right there on that blanket. <laughs> and yeah, go ahead, grab whatever props you might need. Oh, and today's exploration of crow is actually a reclined crow. So a reclined crow is, well, if you don't know what crow is, crow is an arm balance where you're balancing on your hands and then your knees are up towards your triceps. If you're new to live, well, welcome. Thanks for joining. So yeah, your crow is something you know that we'll be working towards, but recline crow today is on your back. So I find that a recline crow is super duper helpful in you know, finding the muscles and the strength that you need to recruit when you're actually balancing on your hands. So this will be a great little intro lead up to eventually balancing on your hands, maybe one day. So without further ado, we will get started on our backs. So if you have music, go ahead, start that up and just lay down on your back, whether that is taking your legs nice and long or bringing your feet together, taking your knees wide or taking your feet wide, bringing your knees together, just taking a few moments to get yourself settled and then closing your eyes once you feel ready and settled. Closing your eyes, taking a few deep breaths on your Monday morning, the first day of the month. So far, it looks like it's gonna be a nice day. Getting used to the cold, hopefully, but it's always nice to see that sunshine so maybe you're in a spot in your home or wherever you are where you can feel that sunshine on your skin. If you're not, then maybe you just start to notice that sensation or think of that sensation of the sun warming your skin. Each breath filling you up, making you a little bit warmer a little bit more full of life. In these first few moments of your practice, I will invite you to think of an intent. 
it doesn't have to be anything monumental or super important. Just a simple intent for your practice. It's something that you might want to embody for the next 30 minutes. Something that will help you get through the next 30 minutes. And without thinking about it too much, just let it come to you. And together, let's seal that intent, if you thought of one, with one deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And on your next inhale, just start to stretch. Reach your arms long, stretch your legs long. Feel your spine lift off the mat. Feel your lungs fill up. And then as you exhale, pull your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a big hug. Rock a little side to side. Give that low back a nice massage. Feeling some pressure in your hips here. And then we'll interlace the fingers just below the right knee onto the shin and take your left leg long. Gently pull your right knee towards your right shoulder, avoiding your chest and your rib cage. Keep your shoulders and your hips heavy to the floor. You might find gentle pulses here, or you might just find a smooth, steady bit of pressure. Take one more big breath in. Big breath out. Can you pull your knee a little closer? And then we'll come into half happy baby. So sliding your right hand along your right leg, you might grab onto the shin or the ankle or the outside or the inside of the foot, or maybe the big toe. If this feels a little much right now, you can bend your left knee and plant your foot onto the mat to keep your hips a little more grounded. So you're still taking that right knee out nice and wide with just a gentle tug towards, or on the, on the foot so that your knee is pulling a little closer to your shoulder. Warming up the hips, like I said, your crow pose, using a lot of the hips as well, a lot of flexibility and mobility in there. Now let's gently release the right foot. Take the left hand to the right knee. We're coming into a twist, so guide your knee across your body. Your right foot might hook behind your left knee or might just flop onto the floor in front of the leg. Try to keep your right shoulder rooting to the mat. Your head might turn over to the right. Breathe up and down the spine, into the belly. Filling yourself up with that intention, that thing you want to embody for your class. And gently roll your hips back onto the mat, grab onto the back of the leg, stretch your foot up towards the sky, and just take a few little ankle rolls, point and flex the foot. Keeping the shoulders heavy, just a gentle stretch for the back of the leg. And then we'll come into stillness. Take one breath in as you press your heel up towards the sky. One breath out, you might bring your leg just a touch closer. And then on your next inhale, gently release your leg all the way down and take another big stretch. Reach from fingers to toes. Can you get a little longer? And then start to pull your knees back in towards your chest. Nice big squeeze. And you will do that on the other side. So interlace your fingers just below your left knee. Take your right leg long onto the mat. Gently take your knee around over to your left shoulder, avoiding your chest and your rib cage. You might take gentle pulses here, or you might keep that steady tug. Slowly increasing pressure in the hip, massaging the colon. Really nice thing to do first thing in the morning or mid-morning, I don't know, depending on what time you woke up. Just take one more big breath in. Exhale, pull the knee a little closer. And then we'll come into our half happy baby, so sliding the left hand towards the shin, the ankle, maybe grabbing onto the foot, imagining you're standing on the ceiling. 
So your foot is lightly flexed. You're keep that, keeping that knee pulling in towards the shoulder. And you might take your right foot onto the mat if you're feeling like you're really rocking over to the left hand side. Taking a few breaths, feeling the pressure getting a little more intense in the hip. Gravity is doing most of the work. You're just gently holding on. And then we'll start to come into our twist. So take the right leg long if it's not already long. Right hand to the left knee, guide your knee across your body. You might stretch the left arm out long, but keep the left shoulder down. So if you notice that you're really rolling over and that left shoulder lifts, can you decrease the twist a little? So coming out of it a little bit to bring the left shoulder down. And that might even feel a little bit more intense with the shoulder heavy. Take those deep breaths up and down the spine. Into the belly, the rib cage. Give yourself one more inhale. One more exhale. And then slowly bring the hips back down as you press your left foot up towards the sky. Grab onto the back of the leg, hamstring or calf muscle. You can take this opportunity to circle up the ankle, wiggle the toes. Point and flex, whatever you'd like to do. You can keep a soft bend in the left knee as you keep your shoulders heavy. And then come into stillness, pressing your heel up for one more big breath in. As you exhale, you might guide your leg just a tiny bit closer to the body. And then on your next inhale, slowly release. This time we'll reach arms long, legs long. I want you to keep the legs together as best you can, flexing the feet, rooting into the heels. So the legs stay nice and heavy. Let's inhale, reach the arms, the hands up towards the sky, keep them shoulder width. And then as you exhale, you'll start to tuck your chin, pull your belly button towards your spine. We'll start to roll up sort of like a yoga zombie. You might be here and be like, oh no, nothing's happening. That's okay, you can bring your hands to the floor. You can bend your knees a little as you slowly make your way all the way up. Taking a forward fold, let your head hang heavy. Take a few breaths, maybe smile if that felt a little funny or challenging. And then we'll lift the head and make our way into a tabletop. So swing the legs around, come on to all fours. Stack wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, fingers spread nice and wide. Keeping the arms and yeah, keeping the arms straight here, we'll start to circle the shoulders around the wrists a few times. Just bringing the weight into the wrists, but noticing that when you shift forward, you wanna grab the mat with your fingertips. Pressing into the bottom knuckles, especially at the base of the index finger. And then we'll switch directions of the circles. Keep feeling that clawing sensation into the mat. So the wrists will get stronger if they are a sensitive part of the body. Remind yourself that, that they will get stronger, but that you should really focus on your grip throughout each downward dog, each plank. Come back to stillness in the center. We'll take a bit of cat-cow. So as you inhale, lift your chest, drop your belly. As you exhale, round the spine. Again, inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, round, push the mat away. Are you still clawing into the mat? Take one more big breath in. And a big breath out. And this time, as you inhale, lift the chest just a little, kick the right leg back. As you exhale, bring your right knee to your right elbow. Inhale, kick it back. Exhale, take it over to the left. So it might not touch, that's okay. You're just reaching it in that direction. One more each side, kick it back. And squeeze it in maybe a tiny bit higher. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, take it to the left. And this time, kick it back. And we'll take it to the right one more time. Can you lift it a little higher? Can you squeeze your heel to your glute? And then step your right foot wide, so to the pinky finger. Crawl your hands forward just a little bit. Your foot might be as wide as your mat, your heel is in, your toes are out slightly. Allow your hips to reach forward and down a little. 
and take a few moments here to sway through the hips a little, maybe make circles or shift a bit forward and back. And you're just feeling out that space in the hips. You stay there for a couple more breaths. I'll be back in just one second. All right, and then come to stillness. Start to walk your hands just over towards the left side a little bit. So maybe to the top corner of your mat or maybe even off of your mat. Take a few breaths here, let your head hang heavy. Keep rooting into the right big toe, hugging the inner thighs, finding a little lift in the core. Finding length down both sides of the body. And then slowly begin to walk your hands over to the left. As you straighten out the right leg, we're turning all the way to the long edge of the mat. Right leg is long, press into the outer edge of your foot, and then lower down onto your forearm. So we're stretching out the inner thigh a little bit. Hips might stay lifted, or you might pull them back, depending on where you want to feel the sensation, where you want a little more. If it is too much to be on the forearms, you can be onto the hands, you can softly bend the elbows. Take a few more breaths, either in stillness or a gentle sway or a gentle rock. And then we'll come back onto the hands if you are on the forearms and you'll start to turn, face the back of your mat. We're coming into a plank, so you can keep the knees down, spine long, or you can tuck the toes, lift the knees off the mat. Wrists are above the shoulders. <laughs> shoulders are above the wrists. Fingers spread wide, press into the mat. Feel the legs super strong. The belly button lift to the spine. You're gazing somewhere in between the hands, so the neck is long. Take an inhale here, a little shift forward. And as you exhale, bend the elbows, keep them close as you lower to the mat. Inhale, lift your chest into a little cobra. As you exhale, press back through a child's pose, hips to the heels. And then rise back up into your tabletop. So you're still facing the back of the mat. It's all good, we're just gonna do that on the other side. So take a moment to set yourself up in your table. And then take a breath in, lift your chest up, cow. As you exhale, round the spine, cat. Option in this time to press the tops of the feet down, hover the knees an inch off the mat. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chest. Exhale, round the spine, option again to hover the knees, finding more core. One more time, you choose what option you would like to take. Maybe your decision is based on that feeling, that thing you want to embody in your practice. This time as you inhale, kick the left leg back. As you exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, kick it long. Exhale, take it over to the right towards that direction. Maybe it touches your elbow. Inhale to extend. Exhale and squeeze. Keep pushing into the mat with each and every finger. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take it to the right. Last time, kick it back. Take it to the left, can you bring it a little higher? And then step your foot wide. Heel in, toes out. Hands walk forward just a little. And then this time we move around gently. Yeah, making circles or shifting forward and back. You might roll to the edge of the foot. Always nice to get into the hips in the morning. So open them up. We'll stretch them out before maybe we spend some time at our desk or on our couch. And then come into stillness and start to walk your hands over to the right side this time. So maybe to the edge of the mat or maybe off of it. Keep pressing into the big left toe, gently squeezing the inner thighs, lifting the core. Let your head hang heavy. Maybe you can see your screen here, maybe not, but that's okay. You don't need to. You just need to feel what you feel right now. And then we'll slowly start to walk the hands towards the long edge of the mat as you lengthen the left leg. Turn the right toes behind you. Press into the outer edge of the left foot. And then either stay on the hands or come down onto forearms if that feels nice. Taking little rocks possibly or just staying in stillness with hips reaching back. Again, wherever feels right for you this morning. Whatever will embody that intent. Now let's come back onto the hands if you are on the forearms. 
Start to turn, face the top. We meet again at the top of the mat, stepping back into your plank, either from the toes or from the knees. Either way, legs super strong, lift the core. Reach the center of your chest forward, so feeling long through the spine, long through the neck. Steady in the breath. Take one inhale, we'll shift forward a little. And as you exhale, bend the elbows, keep them close to the body. Inhale, lift your chest, legs are strong. Exhale, press yourself back. This time we come into downward dog. Toes step under, hips lift high. Take a moment or two to pedal out your first downward dog. So shake your head, to sway your hips, whatever feels good. Yeah, that's the name of this class. So how can you make it feel good? When you're ready, let's gaze towards the hands. Take as many steps as you need to to the top of your mat. Feet hip width apart, forward fold. Soft bend in the knees. Circle the arms all the way behind you. Interlace your fingers, squeeze your palms, let your arms float away from your body. Doesn't matter how far your arms get away from your body as long as you feel the stretch through the chest, the shoulders. Take a moment to slide the shoulder blades away from the ears. And then we'll inhale, lengthen the spine halfway, lift the core, squeeze the thighs. As you exhale, fold, soften the knees, keep squeezing your palms. Inhale to rise all the way up into a little back bend, sliding shoulders down, reaching knuckles down, lifting the heart. And then gently release your arms by your sides. Take a big breath in. And a big breath out. All right. From here, making sure feet are roughly hip width and parallel to each other. We'll take an inhale, reach your arms overhead, keep them shoulder width. And as you exhale, bend the knees into a chair. So staying nice and low, shifting the weight towards the heels. We'll shift the weight towards the right hand side and pull your left thigh to your chest. Take a breath in here, can you lift your leg a little higher? And as you exhale, press it back, arms by your sides, palms face down. You can keep a little bend in the right knee. Inhale again, lift the left leg, thigh to the chest, arms reach. Exhale, sweep it back. It's okay if you're a little wobbly, I am too. Inhale, last time, reach up. Exhale, sweep back. And then tap the left toes to the mat. You whoo, can keep the back knee lifted or you can lower it. Take a breath in, elbows bend, cactus arms, lift the chest. As you exhale, reach forward, so really hollowing out the core, a little rounding of the back. Inhale again, open the chest, <laughs> elbows bend, cactus arms. Exhale, hollow out the front side, reach and round. One more like that, inhale to open, and exhale to round, keep hollowing out through the core. Stay here, upper body just sort of hovering over the right thigh as you keep reaching forward, keeping the back leg strong. This time as you inhale, straighten the front leg, arms open wide, keep the chest lifted, and as you exhale, dive down over the right leg. Bring your fingertips down either to the mat or maybe to a block, maybe your palms can come down. Hug the inner thighs together, pull the right hip back. Take an inhale here, find length through the spine. As you exhale, fold, soften the knees, the knees as much as you need to to plant the hands down. So get that firm grip on the mat, claw into it. Pull your right thigh to your chest, keeping the knee bent, press back into a downward dog with the hip open. And then take a few circles here with the right knee bent, drawing big circles with the right knee. Switch directions, just taking a couple each side, keeping the hip lifted high. And then pause here with the hip open, knee reaching to the sky. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, come forward to plank. Your left knee can drop down at any point. Bring your right knee to your right elbow. Slide it down to your wrist. Either bring it to the mat or hover. Strong exhale, pull your knee back up. Inhale to kick it back. You can either stretch your leg long or keep it bent. A couple more times. Exhale, come forward to plank. Maybe that left knee drops. Inhale to either hover the right knee or bring it to the mat. Exhale, pull it back up. Inhale, up and back. Last time, strong exhale, squeeze. This time, bring it all the way down. We're coming into pigeon. Sliding the left leg long, top of your left foot to the mat. Take a peek back over the shoulder, make sure the leg is straight back. 
and the ankle is right in line with the shin. So your toes are pointing right back. We'll take an active pigeon here. So press into the outer edge of the right foot, the right shin. If you need to slide a block or a pillow, something underneath of your right hip, go for it. But it's okay if that right hip is a little bit lifted here, as long as you're not feeling any pain in the knee. Hug the inner thighs together, lift the chest. Hands can be out in front of you for support, or maybe they come close to your hips as you really squeeze the inner thighs. Again, keeping hands on floors for support, or maybe floating them off of the mat, really lifting the core, really squeezing the inner thighs, pressing into the top of the left foot, lifting the chest, and then we'll slowly shift the weight over to the right side. Step your left foot out wide. Crawl your hands forward so you're on your right shin, and then press into the hands so you can step your right foot out wide. Coming into a squat, but keeping hips in line with the knees. Press into the outer edges of the feet. Inhale to reach your arms out long, shoulder height. As you exhale, stand up, bring your hands to your heart. Couple more, inhale, bend the knees, reach the arms long. Exhale, strong, stand up, you've got this. We do one more, inhale to reach. Exhale, strong, squeeze of the glutes, hands to heart. And then we'll step the feet hip width apart. And we come right into that on the other side, so fast. Inhale, arms reach high. I completely forgot something, that's okay. I forgot a boat, so. You can thank me. <laughs> Arms reach high, feet hip width apart, and then we'll bend the knees, coming into our chair, sitting the hips back low, lifting the chest. We'll do an extra boat on the second side, okay? Shift the weight over to the left foot, lift the right leg up, so thigh squeezes into chest. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, press the heel back, arms by your sides. Inhale again, thigh squeezes to chest, keep a little bend in the left knee. Exhale, sweep it back. Keep looking at one point in front of you. Focus your gaze one more time. Reach up and back. This time we tap the right toes to the mat. You can either drop your right knee down or keep it lifted. Keep the left leg bent as you bend the elbows, lift the chest. And exhale, reach forward, hollow out through the core. Again, inhale, lift the chest, cactus arms. Exhale, reach around the spine. One more time, inhale to open. And exhale to reach and round and hold, hovering the upper body over the left thigh, squeezing the inner thighs. Now let's inhale to straighten the left leg, arms reach out wide like wings. And then as you exhale, dive down, lead with the chest. Nice and controlled, maybe a little wobbly. Fingertips to the mat, hug the inner thighs together, pull your left hip back. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold and soften. One more time, we'll lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold, soften. Bend your knees as much as you need to to plant your hands down, spread your fingers wide. Feel that firm grip on the mat, you've got this. Pull your left thigh to your chest. Kick it up and back, opening the hip. So knee reaches to the sky and begin to circle your knee around a couple times. Keeping the hips reaching high, the fingers gripping strong. We will switch directions. A couple more maybe on this side. And then keeping the hip open, take a big breath in. As you exhale, come forward again. That right knee can come down if you need to. Left knee to left tricep. Inhale it down to the wrist. Either tap it to the mat or hover. Exhale, pull it back up. And inhale, kick it back. Either knee bent or leg long. Two more times, you can do it. Pull the knee to the tricep, maybe a little higher. Inhale it down to the wrist. Keep the grip strong. Exhale, squeeze it back up. You've got this. Inhale, kick it back. You've got one more. What was that intention? Remind yourself of that right now as you lower your knee with control to your wrist and lower your hips down to pigeon. Right leg long, toes pointing straight back. And this time we will press into the outer left foot, the ankle bone, the pinky toe edge of the foot. Maybe grabbing your block if that left hip is really high, you want some support, but it is okay if the left hip is just a little bit lifted. 
Press into the fingertips, hug the inner thighs so you feel yourself physically lift a little bit higher. Pulling belly button to spine, softening the shoulders, smiling because we're almost there and you're doing it. You're feeling good hopefully on your Monday morning. Maybe you walk your hands by your hips for support or maybe you take your fingertips off the floor. If you're shaking, it's okay. If you're in pain, it's not. So find somewhere in between. Finding the edge, exploring. Now let's shift the weight to the left side. Step your right foot wide. Walk your hands forward, pressing into the right foot so you can step your left foot wide. This time we will lower the hips into a yogi squat. <laughs> a little bit deeper, but not so deep that you're just hanging out or compressing and sinking into joints. You're still using muscles in your yogi squat. Pressing into the outer edges of your feet. Maybe bring your hands to your heart. If your hands are at your heart, can you press your elbows against your knees and then hug your knees back into your elbows? Can you lengthen the spine? And can you breathe? I hope so. If all those things aren't happening, the one thing that should be happening is breathing. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, softly drop your hips down to the mat, walking your hands behind you if you'd like. Take the knees and the feet together. All right, we have to make up for a missed boat pose. So sit up tall, feel that same length as you just had in your spine. Either grab the backs of the legs or have your hands on the floor for support as you lean back. Either keeping your toes on the mat, maybe hover them, pull belly button to spine, or maybe bring your shins parallel. Lift the chest, breathe here. If you'd like even more, you can reach your arms long. You can reach them over your head, which is pretty difficult. You can straighten the legs. You can stay right where you are. So many options. What was that intent that you set? How are you meeting that intention? How are you creating that intention right now? We're doing it together. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, we'll slowly lower with control, slower than you want to, upper body and legs. Same time, keep pulling belly button to spine. Before you lower everything down, hold here and hover. Because you can, because it's Monday, because it's a new month. Try something new. Take one more inhale. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Take a moment here to breathe into the belly. Okay, now we have reached our reclined crow peak. <laughs> so hopefully there's still a little bit left in the tank. Let's hug the knees in towards the chest. Give yourself a nice big squeeze. I'm gonna try to do this from the side so that you can see what it looks like from the side. Okay, so you're hugging your knees in, pulling them nice and tight, and then lift your shoulders and head off of the mat. I want you to keep your neck long so your toes are tucked in and it's not cranked back, it's in the middle. Keep squeezing your knees in, feeling here your belly button pressed towards the mat, your ribs squeeze into your hips. Keeping your legs as they are as best you can. You can either bring your hands behind your head for support or reach them out long shoulder width up towards the sky. Keeping your big toes together, take your knees wide. And then can you find strength in the lower abdominals to lift your hips off the mat? This is tough. Hey, if it gets to be too much, you can always lower the feet down and give yourself a break or just work on holding here, using the strength of the core. Keep pulling the knees out wide and close to the triceps. Maybe they touch. Keep breathing here. You've got this. Stay for one more inhale. One more exhale. Give yourself one more big breath in. And as you exhale, let's lower slow. Take the arms and the legs long. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so remembering that sensation next time you try crow or in these future Monday classes, we'll probably do recline crow again because it's such a good warm up for crow. Remembering that connection to your core, everything pulling in. All right, let's bend the knees, take your feet onto the mat, hip width apart. We're coming into a little bridge. Press evenly into the feet, squeeze the glutes and press your hips up towards the sky. Find a slight tuck of the tail here. So rather than overarching in the low back, can you find a little bit of length in the low back? 
Can you keep your knees hip width apart rather than splaying them out? Some engagement through the inner thighs. Take a few big breaths. If this is too much right now, you can slide your pillow or your block underneath of your hips for a little more support. But we are not here for too much longer. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, slowly lower down. And bring the feet together, knees open wide. Place your hands wherever comfortable, possibly underneath of the hips and the glutes, maybe on your belly. Connect to that space that you worked really hard, that you brought some attention to. You know, a space, a part of our bodies that a lot of us are pretty you know, self-conscious about or insecure about, but it holds so much power. So give your core, give your belly some love here for how hard it worked. How strong it is, how much power it holds. And gently take your hands to the outside of the legs and draw your knees together. Take your feet wide. Pause here for a breath or two. And then we'll start to windshield wiper and knees side to side. Give a bit of movement back into the hips. And we'll finish off with a twist because that always feels so good. It always helps to wrap up the practice. So we'll drop the knees over to the right. Any variation of twist that you'd like. You might stack the legs. You might keep the feet a little wider for a more passive twist. And you might tangle them up or take the left leg long. Whatever solidifies and creates that intent that you said at the beginning. Whatever aligns with that. Reminding yourself that your intention doesn't have to be, you know, something monumental, life-changing. But I promise that if it is simple, and it's small, and it's manageable, eventually it will be pretty life-changing. Let's bring the legs back up, drop them over to the left side, taking your twist, whatever variation you would like. Feeling our heart rate start to slow down as your breath gets a little deeper and slower. all the hard work in the past, but it's still staying with you. So all these efforts that you put on the mat are never wasted. And they stay with you. Slowly bring the knees back up through center. You can take a couple more windshield wipers. You can give yourself a hug, whatever it is that you would like, that you need before settling into your savasana. Whatever shape that looks like for you, just somewhere that you feel relaxed. Could be legs long, could be feet together, could be in fetal position. Somewhere that feels good. Taking these last few moments of your practice to let all of that effort sink in, all of that work. So maybe taking a few moments to either solidify the intention that you made at the beginning or finding a new one that you want to lead with as you head into your day, as you head into this month. Something simple, something manageable, something that you can come back to whenever you feel overwhelmed or lost or stuck. Something that will get you through 
this month, one day at a time, one breath at a time. Make sure to thank yourself before you head out, before you head off into your day. As always, you can spend some more time in your savasana. But when you're ready to move and to move forward, you just make sure to do so slowly and mindfully. And I thank you, as always, for joining me, for joining Mimi and Bonnie for your Monday morning feel-good flow. Have an incredible day. Namaste.